don't know about you guys, but sometimes I buy ingredients as a prompt to see what I can make with them. And the other day I bought this beautiful pork loin. Started up looking different types of recipes, and I decided to make some pork gyros, or gyros. Now this won't be prepared on a spit, but according to the recipes that I sourced to put this together, that doesn't seem to matter. And that'll definitely make things much easier for us here at home. So I'm gonna start by slicing this into one centimeter thick pieces. Thin enough that it'll stay tender when we cook it, but thick enough that it won't overcook right away. And these pieces were looking a little wide for wrapping up in a pita, so I sliced them down in the middle to make thin strips. Next, I dumped that into a bowl so I could prep the marinade. I peeled and grated one small red onion. I smashed and minced a couple cloves of garlic. Sprinkled on a teaspoon of oregano, a teaspoon of thyme, and a teaspoon of paprika. I added in half a teaspoon of sugar, which I'm guessing helps with caramelization. A little bit of salt, and a few cracks of black pepper. I mixed that around a little bit just so everything was coated in the herbs. And then added in a teaspoon of mustard. About a tablespoon of red wine vinegar. And about four tablespoons of olive oil. I went ahead and mixed that with my hands, because uh, the fork wasn't really doing the job. Cover that with plastic wrap. Threw it in the fridge. And you could let this sit for as little as two hours, but I let it sit for a lot longer than that. Next up, I made my tzatziki sauce, which calls for strained yogurt. They don't seem to have pre-strained Greek yogurt in the grocery stores, so instead I dropped about 500 grams of full-fat Greek yogurt into a strainer over a bowl. And that bowl was a little bit small, so I moved it to a bigger bowl, but this bowl was too wide, so the strainer was touching the bottom. So I set up this little rig with my strainer on top of a rack over the bowl, so any liquid that strains out from the yogurt drips into the bowl. Now I really used to do this overnight, but I didn't have that much time, so I did this for about five hours as well. And after that time, you can see a whole bunch of liquid has strained out, and the texture has turned into kind of halfway to that of cream cheese. If you let this go for longer, it'll be a thicker sauce. It's really up to you how you like it, but it's best if it's not too runny so it doesn't drip out of your sandwich. Now that the yogurt is ready, I'm gonna chop a cucumber in half, save the other half for garnish later on. We wanna grate this into a pulp, but because there's a bunch of seeds in the middle, I'm gonna work my way around the outside of the cucumber, avoiding that central seedy area. Once that's grated, I'm gonna squeeze out all the excess moisture in a strainer. and add that in with the yogurt. Next up, I've got a handful of dill that I'm gonna chop finely. I'll mix that on in. And you can use as little or as much as you want here. Basically all the recipes said this was optional, so it's really up to you. Now I need to mash up four cloves of garlic. So I smashed and peeled it. And started mincing as finely as I can go with my knife, but that wasn't quite cutting it, so I transferred to a mortar and pestle, along with a pinch of salt for abrasion. And got to mashing that up. Mix it in. And let's add a sprinkle of salt about a tablespoon of red wine vinegar, and three tablespoons of olive oil. 
And the olive oil you use here is definitely important. Since we're not cooking this, you're really gonna taste that olive oil. So make sure you get something of good quality that you wouldn't mind dipping bread in. And of course this bowl was too small as well, so I transferred it to a larger bowl. and mix that as thoroughly as possible. You really want to incorporate all that olive oil so it's not floating to the surface. Next, I covered it up with plastic wrap and threw it in the fridge to chill out for a little while. This gets better the longer all of those herbs and spices are sitting in there, so it's best to make it ahead of time. Now we need something to wrap our gyros in, so I'm gonna make some pita bread. And you're gonna be amazed at how simple this recipe is. It's so quick and easy that whipping up some pitas the day of a party is an achievable task. So for four pitas, I've got 250 grams of flour. I'm using bread flour here, but you could use all purpose as well. To that, I'll add 175 milliliters of water, which makes that 70% hydration. So it'll be a bit of a sticky dough, but don't worry, it's pretty easy to work with. Next, I'll add half a teaspoon of sugar, half a teaspoon of salt, five mils or about a teaspoon of olive oil, and a packet of active dry yeast. That's about seven grams. Now I'm using my stand mixer because that makes things 10 times easier, but if you're doing this by hand, just keep mixing it until it comes together and just keep kneading it for about five minutes. Ideally with a silicone spatula or other implement, that way you don't have to get your hands all sticky. As for me, I kept this going for about five minutes as well until it came together like this, and you can really see how sticky that looks. Then I transferred it into a bowl, covered it up with plastic wrap, and the recipes say to let that rise for about an hour, but it was kind of warm here and my yeast was going crazy. So I transferred it to one of these tall deli containers, punched it on down, and this is a time lapse of 20 minutes of rising, so you can see how crazy my yeast was going. But it all depends on your local climate, so um, results may vary. Once it's risen, I'll transfer it to a dusted work surface and cut it into four equal pieces. Form those into bowls by tucking the edges in and twisting up the end to seal it. And then I press these out like pizza doughs before switching to a rolling pin to get them extra thin. I wasn't worried about pressing too many air bubbles out because my yeast was so active, but if you're a little bit worried and it's feeling too dense, then go ahead and just press it out by hand. You want it to be about three millimeters thick and probably eight to 10 inches wide or as big as you want your gyros to be. Now to cook these, I place them in a non-stick skillet over medium high heat and let them brown for two to three minutes on either side. I actually flip them a few times to get even browning, and I recommend you do that for at least the first one, though you get familiar with your pan and know where the hot spots are. And you can see this is trying to fluff up a little bit, so you can go ahead and press that down if you want, and keep flipping until it gets these nice golden spots. Once they're done, transfer them to a wooden cutting board with a towel on top to keep them warm. The wood will help absorb some extra moisture, that way they don't get soggy on the bottom. And then we can move on to the garnishes, which in my case are some thinly sliced onions, about a millimeter thick. Then I'm going to squeeze and rinse in some cold water, which will take out some of the excess bite. That way it's not just like raw onion taste. I'll use the mandolin on the other half of that cucumber, going lengthwise to make nice strips. And I got this beautiful beefsteak tomato that I'm also going to slice on the mandolin. Now back to the meat, you can cook it in the oven or in a skillet, but it's getting nice out here, so I went out to the grill, got some charcoal going. And grilled that for about three to five minutes on either side until the internal temperature was safe for eating. Now to assemble, I laid down a piece of tin foil underneath my pita, spread out some tzatziki sauce, added some pork, some 
tomatoes, some cucumbers, some onions. Finally adjusted my focus <laughs> and then wrapped it up in that tin foil. And this is so surprisingly good. Like, it's kind of amazing how on point it really tastes. I mean, of course I'm using Greek sources for my recipe, so it should taste authentic, but the pork gets all those herbs and spices and garlic coming through just the way that you've had it before at a Greek restaurant. The tzatziki adds so much delicious freshness. And the most amazing thing is that I didn't even notice the pitas. That's how good they are. They were just so on point with the pitas that I've had in the past. And it's kind of ridiculous how easy they were to make. I mean, this whole dish was so easy to make. So I highly recommend that you make this whenever you get a chance. I guarantee it's going to be a favorite of yours.